A man who says a priest rep repeatedly molested him more than 20 years ago has filed a first-of-its-kind lawsuit today under a new state law. It is that law that allows survivors who are past the statute of limitations to sue their alleged abusers. The suit names the Archdiocese of Denver, a parish in Fort Collins, and a defrocked priest. Kevin Vaughn from our Nine Wants to Know team joins us now. And Kevin, this is not the first time we have heard this former priest's name. It's not, Kim. The former clergy member at the center of this story was in the news in the mid-2000s after being charged with molesting multiple children. The man who came forward today brings the number of his known accusers to five. This guy was a machine at manipulating kids. Scott Verdi was about 14 in the late 1990s when he met Father Tim Evans. I, I was an altar boy when he first, when he first uh, came to our church. That parish was St. Elizabeth Ann Seton in Fort Collins. There, Verdi now alleges that between 1999 and 2003, Evans molested him more than 100 times. The alleged victim says Evans called him three years later. If Evans' name sounds familiar, it's because in the mid-2000s he faced charges of molesting boys at a church in Arvada, as well as the one in Fort Collins. We steadfastly maintain uh, his innocence in this case. Despite his attorney's assertion, juries in two counties convicted Evans of child sex assault, and a judge sentenced him to 14 years to life in prison. He was paroled in July 2020. Troubling questions about Evans' behavior had been raised as far back as the seminary, according to a groundbreaking investigation by the Colorado Attorney General. Father Evans utilized fear um, to really control me. Uh, I have never been so scared of a person my entire life. Verdi uh, never reported what he says happened to him, something that's always bothered him. It just allows me to, to write a regret that I always had him as an adult. Today, an adult, he became the first person in Colorado to uh, sue the Catholic Church under the new law. That I finally feel insulated for once. Like, I don't feel alone. I don't feel like I have to take on this behemoth of the Catholic Church by myself. A spokeswoman for the Archdiocese of Denver said the church has not been served with the suit and said she would not comment on pending litigation. To get paroled, Evans had to admit he molested those children back in the 90s. Bertie is seeking a minimum of $100,000. Okay, and again, this is because of this new law. How does it fit with some of the other cases, this particular case? The allegations this man makes about what was done to him, how he was groomed, the pattern of abuse, lines right up with the allegations made by those boys in the, in the mid-2000s that led to criminal charges. Mm -hmm. This new law generated because of, of events like this, that the, the, those that have been maybe fallen to time? Yes, it allows people today to go back as far as 1960 and file civil lawsuits against people they allege sexually molested them. Uh, the statute of limitations is normally just a few years on those kinds of things. And the window is open for that this year and the next two years. So January 1st of 2026, that law goes Three away. Years. Three years. All right. Well, we've seen, you know, for a while there was just like a, so many and it was high profile in the news and then kind of things drifted away. So now maybe this is giving people an opportunity. Um, to right. Move forward. And his lawyer pointed out today something that we all know is that a lot of people who suffer sexual assault don't report it mm -hmm. or don't report it for months or years or even in some cases decades. Right. What about the difference, though, between a criminal accusation and a civil accusation as far as what it'll take as far as evidence to get a, a, a jury to to side one way or the other well you have a you have a lower burden of proof in civil court preponderance of evidence versus beyond a reasonable doubt um, but it is you know difficult in cases like this it's not like a murder case, an old murder case where there's dna or something right this yeah. is going to be about testimony and church records and what these other cases look like compared to this one yeah and a lot of memories, it's very difficult on, on the accuser in this case or the victim, um, that's very difficult. Yes. All right, thank you, Kevin. Mm -hmm. An Adams County judge ruled today that there will be three separate trials for the five people who stand accused of killing Elijah McLean. McLean, of course, died after police stopped him while he was walking home in August of 2019. Elijah McLean had done nothing wrong. The police officers responded to a call for a suspicious person. One of the officers, Nathan Woodyard, placed McLean in a carotid hold. Later, two paramedics, Jeremy Cooper and Peter Kachiniak, administered ketamine, a powerful sedative to McLean. He lost consciousness and then died a few days later. Today, the judge in the case ordered one trial for Woodyard, the officer who applied the carotid hold, and another trial for the two other officers involved, Jason Rosenblatt and Randy Rodema,
as well as now a third trial for those two paramedics. Justice requires that when defendants have antagonistic defenses, that is, that they'll be accusing one another, that you've got to have separate trials. Uh, fundamental fairness requires separate trials in situations where one defendant is essentially acting as a fellow prosecutor against the other defendant. Well, all five of those defendants are scheduled for arraignment tomorrow. They are each facing one count of manslaughter and one count of criminally negligent homicide. And four of the five have also been charged with second-degree assault. Good news for drivers that have been stuck trying to go east on I-70 this afternoon. One of the eastbound lanes reopened. This is what we see from yesterday. A crash near Strasburg closed both east and westbound lanes. Westbound lanes opened late this afternoon. At least nine semi-trucks and 12 cars crashed, and it split one semi in half. State Patrol says two people had minor injuries in the crash, which is stunning when you see how bad this really looked. Um, but it's still going to be slow around that area. One of the eastbound lanes remains closed between Air Park Road and Deer Trail. And we want to take a look at some of the road conditions around the state. You might think it's all good depending on where you are. Not true. There you see a lot of closures and accidents still happening around the state because as we know this storm headed east. The state patrol wants to shine a light on the dangers that they face when they're out on the roads. This after drivers hit two patrol cars yesterday, one in Douglas County, the other in Adams County, where troopers were helping with accidents. Now, thankfully, everyone was OK. CSP wants to remind drivers, slow down or move over or do both to keep law enforcement, emergency workers, tow drivers and others safe, especially in these conditions. So let's take a live look outside where it is very different. We had some thawing, some melting today. A lot of sunshine, it did warm up, but there is another round of snow on the way. This time, Kathy, I guess it won't be quite as bad as the big one we got yesterday. Not even close, but congratulations to all of you for surviving the biggest storm of the season. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, bravo. And the biggest January storm since 1992. And when the storm moved out, we were left with cold. These are the morning low temperatures. Look at Greeley, minus 6, 13 at DIA, minus 11 in Kremlin, minus 13 in Gunnison. It was a cold start to the day, but wasn't it glorious to see the sun for at least a little while? Big extensive mountain wave cloud has settled in. That may actually help to keep the overnight minimums up a bit, but didn't allow for a whole lot of melting today. The next storm is already moving into western Colorado, a tightly wound little compact system that will travel into northern Arizona and northern New Mexico. We think too far south to bring much of any snow to Denver and northern Colorado. So the bullseye southeastern Colorado for the potential for heavy snow, and we're again on the northern fringe of that, so not overly excited about seeing a big system here. Only 24 at the airport, but we managed 40 degrees downtown today, so a little bit more melting here. Winds are pretty light and should remain so overnight, and we're watching on future cast as we'll see a mostly cloudy overnight period, a mostly cloudy day tomorrow. We get you late into the day. By this time tomorrow, you see how we're not seeing much on the future cast for snow, but I've got to tell you the potential is there. About a 30% chance that we'll see a snow shower late in the day into the evening, but less than an inch of accumulation expected tomorrow if we do see that snow. So coming up in Maine weather, we're going to cover that. We're going to look ahead to the weekend forecast. Tom's been asking me about that, Kim, since Monday. Yeah, and 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 definitely skipping over yesterday. He oh, wanted yeah. to, but that's didn't happen. Memory didn't because he wanted the blue ribbon for surviving <laughs> the storm. Look, looking for answers, though, Kath. I know you are. <laughs> okay, pressure, pressure. Energy bills are really high right now, and that means more people need help paying them. Organizations that try to help say demand has been off the charts. Energy Outreach Colorado says it's helped more than 20% more people this month compared to last January. Another payment assistant group said, called LEAP says demand for help is up 10% this season. But the help these organizations are able to provide doesn't last forever, and that could mean big problems on future bills. Both LEAP and our bill payment assistance, they are only accessible once each calendar, each year. And so you people have to be thoughtful about when they are going for these this assistance. So they also say that Energy Outreach tries to help people strategize about when it is best to get bill help and what to do to lower the costs in the meantime. Excel says it offers payment plans for people, and the company says natural gas prices have come down, meaning next month's bill should be a little lower. 
Denver police say they've arrested three people who they believe are responsible for shooting and killing a 17-year-old girl last March. Jasmine Rivas Hernandez was shot and killed near Colfax in Quebec, March 27th of last year. Police say they found Rivas Hernandez in an alley. Well, today police say they've arrested 34-year-old Robert Solano, 26-year-old Joseph Chavez, and 21-year-old Shiloh Fresquez. Solano and Chavez were already in custody in connection to a different crime. Solano was booked on suspicion of first-degree murder. Chavez and Fresquez both arrested on accessory charges. Just in the last hour, we've learned that David Crosby, who was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame twice, has died at the age of 81. He was a founding member of two iconic bands, The Birds, and of course, Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young. His wife shared a statement with Variety saying Crosby had battled a long illness. She said he was surrounded by loved ones. Rolling Stone included five albums Crosby contributed to in its 500 greatest albums of all times. He was the son of an Academy Award winning cinematographer. Crosby dropped out of college to pursue his music career. He was a singer, songwriter, guitarist, he played a major role in developing folk rock, country rock, and what became known as California Sound. David Crosby was 81 years old. You know, when you think of uh, David Crosby, obviously that um, difficult relationship that he often had with Graham Nash, as well as the, mm -hmm. the others in the band, it became famous. And uh, they were, I believe, still talking about getting back together at some point. But uh, that had been a difficult part of their relationship. And, uh, you know, when you think of him with the birds, uh, Richie Fure, uh, who was in the birds with him back in the, in the 60s, uh, became a pastor here up in Broomfield. Oh. He's been here for quite a while. So it's, uh, uh, I wish G. Brown were here to tell me all this stuff. I G. know, G. he is the, the best. Yeah. Well, maybe we still need to get him but, back in uh, next week to talk about Because I was reading that, you know, even in recent weeks and months, he'd talked about still writing and said he wasn't going to perform because he wasn't feeling up to that, but still wanted to write, still wanted to put together some music. And I know they said sometimes he was prickly. But that's what artists are. Yeah, most of the time it sounds like <laughs> when you hear people talk about it. But uh, David Crosby certainly uh, really Brilliant. one of the foundations and the legacy of the growth of rock and roll in the United States. Well, a year and a half after the very famous deadly shooting on a movie set, Alec Baldwin is now going to face charges. More bad news for Southwest Airlines. Pilots might go on strike.